prayer. Any prayer requests we would begin. Let's remember Brother and Sister York. Uh, are you? Sister Veronica as well, yes. Okay. Brother Roy Onfinis, yes, that's right, yes, in Norway. All right, let's all lift up our voice together. Heavenly Fathers, we come at this time before thee. We're ever so thankful, Lord, that we can approach thee. Lord, you've seen the request, Lord, that's gone before thee, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that you would meet their needs, Lord, at this time. There may be unspoken requests, Lord. You know them all, whether it be here in this building or wherever they may be, Lord, on thy footstool. Now, Lord, as we come to this service, I pray, Lord, that you would have your way in every part, Lord. And we have come here to worship and praise thee. And I ask all these things in that wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ this morning, I pray. Amen. You can be seated at this time. Praise the Lord. Good to see everybody this morning. Full house. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. When I look around and see all the good things He's done for me. So much to thank him for. Uh, so thankful every morning when I wake that uh, he saved me. There's so much going on right now, and uh, I'm just thankful that 
we know where we stand in time. There's no confusion in my mind. It's, uh, it's clear. I see the picture, and uh, I'm just so thankful. Thanks, thanks, I give you thanks. Yeah. 
the Lord. Did anybody have a song upon their hearts this morning? 91? 91? The signs of times are flashing all around us. And man grows more wicked every day. But there is coming soon a righteous king. There's another way to glory on the way. Can we go up? Sorry. Sorry. It was way too low for me. There's another way of glory on the way. Let's get our house in order for today. Let's lift our voices up and praise Jesus. There's another way of glory on the way. The signs of time are flashing all around us. And man more wicked every day But there is coming soon a righteous kingdom There's another way of glory on the way There's another way of glory on the way Let's get our house in order for today Let's lift our voices up and praise Jesus. There's another way to glory on the way. The world of close your eyes and now are sleeping. To the prophecies unfolding every day. song this morning. <clears throat> and uh, Sister Crystal, you have a song afterwards. Try a chorus we all know, and uh, I have some extra instruments for some kids if they want to join me. It's in C. I'm glad I know who Jesus is. I'm glad I know who Jesus is.
tested by some bitter trials when the tempter tries to tempt me in life's ways when darkness
Thank you, Crystal, for the song. Brother Mike, do you have a song this morning? Does anybody have anything on your hearts? Testimony or what the Lord has done for you this week? Yeah, Paul, I just want to thank the Lord this morning for a, a small thing that he did for me this week. Brother Roger had asked me if I would uh, give a hand uh, working outside the church, that, that big tree, and uh, and uh, I said I would, and I felt just to be able to get out in the fresh air, and, but uh, I was only expecting uh, a couple other brothers, and, and when I got there, there were two other brothers that was there, and it just uh, kindled something in me, it brought me back to the time when we first started building the church hall. How exciting it was to be able to, for brothers and sisters to work together and just to be able to do some, you know, a small little thing to be able to participate in. Yes. It stirred something in me to, that uh, I thought about it all day and I was thinking how wonderful it was for brothers to dwell together in unity. And uh, Nothing was said but just being able to work together and just being able to do the small things, yes. Yes. how much more in this day and hour that we need for the body of Christ to work together and try to, try to do everything we can to be able to <coughs> the work of God in our hearts and lives. And I really had a wonderful day that day, which is, I'm so thankful that he kindled something in my heart at least, uh, just to be able to do a small thing, but I think we all enjoyed uh, that day, and, uh, yes, it was. You know, it was. Uh, it was kind of monotony in a way. You know, trimming the little branches and all that. But you know something? God is trimming away yes. little things from yes. our hearts yes. and our yeah. lives too. And he, yeah. God knows how to speak. He knows. He knows what He's doing. He's I just thank Him for that day. I just thank Him for that day. <laughs> Uh, this is 219 in the red book. I'm going to cheat a little bit and play it in G. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, keep me near the cross. There's a precious fountain free to all a healing stream. Oh. 
Anybody else have anything on their hearts this morning? Go in the hot seat, Joyce. saying about that tree that the, the ice storm broke and killed a lot of branches and uh, how we went and trimmed it afterwards. Uh, it's the same with our lives when we go through storms in life and once we get on the other side uh, there's trimming to be done and cleaning up and how the Lord cleans us up. Uh, I'm just so thankful for testimonies this morning. Come on up Joyce. Hanging on a cross for the one to be his bride. He waited patiently for what seemed eternity in time. His body torn on the cross with a voice lonesome in the darkness of the afternoon on a rugged tree he proposed to me on my knees I said I do
met with his arms stretched wide Will you be my bride? This is how much that I love you He said he'd love me through all eternity And that he'd always be faithful and true Change this longing bride in a twinkling of an eye with angels by my side, tears of joy I'll cry, I'll see my long change this longing bride in a twinkling of an eye with angels by my side tears of joy i'll cry i'll see my long
stand and we'll turn the service over to Brother Fred. talking about pruning trees, it was uh, Thursday night, we were talking about chapter 15 in John about pruning and 
I had seen a little line uh, on the internet. It says, it's better to be pru uh, pruned than to be removed. <laughs> so, so uh, true, praise the Lord. But uh, how true that is. Uh, I just want to say before we start, um, not next Sunday, but the Sunday after we'll have our business meeting. Did everybody hear that? Not next Sunday, but the Sunday after in two weeks, we'll have our annual business meeting. So praise the Lord. Uh, all right. Heavenly Father, as we come at this time, we thank you, Lord, what you have brought us to, Lord, and how you're leading us in this day and this hour. We thank you, Lord, for thy spirit that is constantly, Lord, mindful about thy people. Now, as we go into the I word, Lord, I just pray you would have your way. We ask it now in that precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I just thought I'd want to touch again the third watch. And not in its beginning, but what is the climax of that third watch to entail? Because it's the hour that you and I live in right now is in that third watch. Luke, Luke talked about Three watches. He doesn't mention in Luke chapter 12, verse 36 and 37, about the first watch, but you'll find that watch. It refers and overlays in the same period of time as Matthew chapter 20, 25. How that we went in and how the, the bride had gone in and shut the door and has been fed. And that too takes a space of time. But at the end of Matthew chapter 25, Jesus says, watch. And so that is your first watch, although it's not mentioned in Luke. But yet, Luke, as we would look at it as a place to start with, before we get into the watches to begin with, as a background, if some has never heard it via the internet or so forth, we take our text from Acts chapter 1 verse 7. And in Acts chapter 1, verse 7, Jesus is actually, his disciples are asking, what's it going to be at, when are you going to restore the kingdom at this time? And he doesn't really, uh, let's say, answer them in the sense that they, what, what they wanted to hear. But sometimes you have to say the hard things to realize that if it's not for your hour, it's not for your hour. And so Jesus says in Acts chapter 1, verse 7, he says, And he said unto them, It's not for you to know. Imagine, they were there just hungry, waiting, Lord, let us know. And he tells them, It's not for you to know. The times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. The times, it's a word and because of what we've been instructed through the ministry of Brother Jackson and Brother Branham, that time sometimes is related to time, time and a half, which is three and a half years. But the word time does not relate to years or date. It's just a word that says it's a multiplier of. And in the sentence or the, or the paragraph where it's talked about, then you have to see whether it is days, years, or centuries. Here he is in... 33 A.D., he's speaking to his disciples. He says, it's not for you to know the times or the season which the Father has put in his own power. It was not in the power of the Son. The reason is because they want to know when, that, when the, he would restore the, the Israel back to her, her place that should be in the Scripture for that kingdom of Israel. And so as he's speaking to them, he says, the Father has reserved that in his power. One day Jesus says, of that day or that hour, 
No man knows the day or the hour, not the angels, not even the Son of Man knows it. And so it's, if the Father has held it in his hand, it is still held close of the day, the actual day and the hour for you and I, which is concerning the rapture to Israel when, they're, when they will be in the land of Israel. And so starting from there, we can see from Genesis, I believe it's Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, God talks about how that the, um, the moon, the sun, and the stars are used to relate to times. It's just something general. It's not specific. We know from the things that man has come across down through these 6,000 years of time that God's time frame for 30 days is the moon is 30-day cycle. The year is a 360-day cycle. But the stars don't go in 360 days or 30 days. They go in terms of years before the stars return back to where it is. Because if you, uh, I don't need to use the globe, I'll put, let's say this is the sun, and we go around the sun, all right? Now, if you look at a certain point where the stars are at that moment in time, as you go around, you have to come back around a year, the year again to see it in that same spot. So it's the years, and then other things move gra more gradual, which is centuries or longer than time. But in this case, in chapter uh, of Acts, chapter one, verse seven, here he is in 33 A.D. He's saying, "You don't. It's not for you to know the times and season. If we put it in today's language, is you don't. It's not for you to know the centuries or the decades." This is not a revelation that I came with. It's what the Lord has showed Brother Jackson about, how he brought concerning centuries and days. But he, didn't go in, he did not go into the watches, which we are looking at in this hour. And so therefore, as you would be from the time of Jesus, there was many centuries that go, would go by, and, it, and there's, there's not, he didn't say, well, here's so many centuries, it'll end over here. First of all, it would have done nothing for those early disciples to know or when the, the centuries would end and decades would start because the events up here in the 21st century, they would knew nothing about, so they couldn't relate to it. That's why it was, Jesus told them bluntly, it's not for you to know. Imagine if the Spirit came today and says, you want to know something, it's not for you to know. How would we, we take that, Right? So, but there would be an hour, remember it's God's plan, the Father's plan, there would be an hour that the centuries would come to an end. It's so simple. Once you see it, I revert back to uh, uh, an old TV show that I seen a long time ago when I was young about Marco Polo and how that he, was, he came home and he, they were asking about his adventure what did you discover? And was just, they were mocking him one sense, well, what did, what did you learn? So in order to show them up, he says, okay, they were eating hard boiled eggs. So he says, uh, how many can you, of you can make a, the egg stand on its end? And you see them in the movie, they're, they're just trying different things, they're rolling over and then he let them play for about 10, 15 minutes. After a while, they all said, well, they can't be done. He takes one egg, give it a little snap, and it stood up. Well, they said, anybody can do that, but you had to see it first. It was there all along. It's the same as the centuries has gone from the time Jesus said in 33 AD, the scripture that would end the counting of centuries is found in Matthew chapter 24, verse 32. Jesus speaks about, now, you don't have to turn, you, I don't think you, I don't have to go quote and bring you to turn to the scriptures all the time. In Matthew 24, verse 32, Jesus speaks about the fig tree. It says, when you see the fig tree put forth a branch or, or bud, 
And then he puts forth leaves. You know, Summers 9. He said then, that generation will not pass away till everything being fulfilled. That points back to what he meant by centuries and by decades. Because when that generation would end, that day of that hour, we would know because there would be a rapture, and seven years later it would be for the nation of Israel, they would be in, in the millennium. Is that clearly understood? So therefore, what stops the counting? Now, it's, the Lord didn't make it in the sense that, oh, we're going to count centuries and we're going to do calculations. Forget it. He does, it doesn't go in that realm whatsoever. It's just that centuries has been going by, 20 of them anyway, at least. But when a certain century we could on board, when Israel would become a nation in that day, that marks the end of counting centuries. You put centuries aside, now you're going to be counting decades. As we looked at that fig tree, it became a nation in one day in 1948. Now, I know you've heard all this before, but I want to take my time to leave a background, so we're going to be looking uh, how this third watch is going to be completed. This generation, he said, that generation shall not pass away. If you're looking when the, it put forth a bud or a, a branch, that's in 1948, and that generation, you take the revelation of it, it's concerning when Israel came out of Egypt and into the Wilderness, that generation meant 20 years, 18 to 20 years older. That's where the generation starts. And that generation is to last, according to other scriptures, about uh, three score and 10, 70 years, and by strength, maybe 90. All right? So 1948 are your World War II veterans. They're about pretty near all gone now. But just one or two here there does not constitute that generation. But the leaves, now if the Lord took a point that when we're looking at the scripture, when Israel became a nation in one day, that's the scripture that's spoke about in Isaiah chapter 66. It's a scriptural prophetic event that took place and is a marker in God's word. But the next thing from 1948, when would the leaves come on ground? Or the leaves would start to come to be on ground. Because in Ezekiel 36, it talks about the branches of the Lord. In other words, when one, starts with one branch, then the tree just doesn't end with one little branch. It branches out. And uh, Brother Gary, we had a lot of branches on that tree when we had to trim that, didn't we? <laughs> That's right. So now, I can see that in 1967, when Israel took more land... That now there's, there were, yes, the population was starting to grow in Israel, but in 1967, when Jerusalem no longer occupied by the Gentile, now you have more land, and Israel, now the leaves are coming. The fruit comes later. It doesn't come when the leaves are starting. So there's another scriptural event in 1967, and I can see that generation, that seen 1967, that was around 18 to 20 years old, would not pass away till everything be fulfilled. And so therefore, since centuries has been laid to rest when Israel became a nation in one day, then we're not talking centuries anymore, now we're talking decades. If a man lives Three score and ten, that's 70 years. That's seven decades. Now, don't go taking your calculator to the bank. It's just telling us now the centuries has stopped. Now we're in the term of decades, and we'll have to look at other scriptures to see how close we are getting towards the end as we move towards that area of time. And the generation of 1967 is my generation. You're, you that are my age, I was born in 47, so 67 would put me 20 years old. 
Well, you say you're pretty old. I hope the Lord comes pretty soon because how, lo how long will you live? But the generation is here. The generation has the knowledge of what was delivered to us by an apostle and by a prophet. Still contains within that generation. They went through it and heard it fresh. Now it doesn't discount those that are born later. God brings everyone up to speed to the level and the measure he saw you and I in Jesus Christ. Is that clear enough so far? All right, good. So now as we've come to 1967, from 1967 to 2017, that's 50 years of it. That's five decades that's gone by. And if it's 70 years, there's only two left. But I'm not going by mathematical calculation. And if you're listening by the internet, don't do it, because God will get you going sideways in every which way. Because since these two events were marked by prophetic events that happened on ground that we could see it, when that miracle war happens, you are now in that last decade. It doesn't have to last a decade long, but it's within that period of a decade. And in that decade, you'll have that miracle war, the building of the temple, the Ezekiel war, the, prophesi the, the uh, thunders, and then prophesying the tongues of the nations. And that's all just the miracle war, the building of the temple, and Ezekiel 38 and 39, and that God opening, the Lord opening up that seventh seal will not take more than 10 years for those events when they start to unfold. So we are living in the, when that miracle war, we can now mark down that last decade has started. We can't do it this morning because the miracle war has not happened yet. But when it does, be of a surety, you are now in that last decade. All right, so now that I've laid that down to that groundwork, we're going to go to Luke, the 12th chapter. There are some things in there that really may explain some of the things that are happening today. Before we get to that place, I'll just read from verse 37 to get you acquainted. It says, Blessed are those servants when the Lord, when he cometh. That's not in his physical coming. That's coming in that shout. That shout is not for a week. It will be as, as long. It'll go till the time of the voice of the archangel. So there's a space of time there involved. But when he comes, verily I say, I say unto you, that he shall gird himself, shall, he that shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet. Who's he talking to? Servants, preachers. It's for the bride as well. So the, there would be a time when that got initiated, which started from 1963, where he, re, fresh revelation was coming from off the throne, coming on down through, yes, it started with Brother Branham, and now it went through Brother Jackson. And he's still feeding servants today, but the servants themselves being fed was mainly done through the ministry of Brother Jackson. And once they've been fed, then they have to be put to work. So he says he'll sit them down to meat, not milk. So if he's feeding them meat, that when they do get on the scene to go forward, it, they'll be, their main part of that fivefold ministry will be dealing with meat, fresh meat. Not just meat. Meat that's 10 years old is not fresh meat. It's good meat. It served its purpose, and it's still good. The seven seals are just as true today as they ever was. But how beautifully fresh it was when, it, when we first heard it. Oh, my. It, it, it got you want to da dancing on your feet, so to speak. Inside, it was just joy. Joy unspeakable. We're like sitting in heavenly places when we heard those things. 
But now, in verse 38, Jesus is cautioning of those that are being fed with meat. And he set them down. He's saying this because it's all concerning watching for his coming. Watching for his coming is in the area of meat and not milk. If we have not got our personal life ready now, when will you ever? And that milk of the word has been given ever since 33 A.D. Some have lived longer than you or I, and there, they should have reached to that place. But the thing is, when we wanted to get close to the Lord... There's two things that you've got to look at. If you're covered by the blood, and the blood sees you clean, if we're walking in the light as he is in the light, the Lord sees you clean. Can you be cleaner than clean? As far as unbelief is concerned? No. Only if we don't want to walk in the light, then there's a price to pay. Now, the sins of the flesh... Don't mix the blood that deals with your unbelief versus the sins of the flesh that Satan tempts you with in his old fallen body. We are to live right. We are to kill that as much as possible that's within us. If we all had the power to do it, we'd do it, bingo, right now. Let it boom, let it all be gone. But that will only be gone when we get a resurrected body. All right, I didn't mean to go in that area, but just keeping things straight. So, in verse 38, he says, And if the Lord should come, if you want to, and if he should come in the second watch. Well, what do you mean a second watch, Lord? We've been watching all along. Azusa Street been watching. Pentecost been watching. In the days of Brother Branham's been watching. But now he's sitting these servants down and he's telling them, what, a, what if I come in the second watch or the third watch? And for a long time that's been sitting there. Man thought on it, had different ideas on it. But now time is on ground. We can see what it's relating to. That first watch you'll find that when the Lord came down from heaven, when it started, that's in Matthew chapter 25, for where they went in with behind and closed the door. But at verse 13, it says, watch. It didn't. Now, Jesus didn't say, this is the first watch. He's just saying, watch. But that was the first watch. And so, when he's feeding his servants... Those watches has to pertain to a period of time where God is giving instruction and information and revelation updating the time that you're living in. So in the days of Brother Jackson, that's your second watch. We have more information about the Lord's coming than they did in the days of Brother Branham. But then there would be a third watch. That would fall in the time of the fivefold ministry now. And in the fivefold ministry, she gets to know when the, when the centuries would end and get to understand when the decade would be starting. And looking closer, we're looking closer now towards that miracle war. Yes, it was through, through the apostle that brought us the understanding of a, the miracle war, the building of a temple, and the Ezekiel war. We know those events. Those are important to understand. But now, when they do come on ground, with the information we have on these watches, they'll show you're in the last decade of time. Not a decade long, but within that last decade, these things should be fulfilled. All right. So during that time, I'm going to read a little further. In verse 39... And this, know that if the good man of the house, 
He didn't say the evil servant. Uh Uh-uh. If the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched. At what hour the thief would come, it's not, oh, I got my watch, it's at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock. No, which watch, if it is in the second watch or the third watch, is what it's referring to. Is that clear? All right. So he says, if the good man of the house had known the hour, the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. That's going to happen during that third watch. During that period of time of the fivefold ministry. Now the good man of the house... I believe he was one of those servants that was being fed through that apostolic ministry. Through that apostolic ministry, as we look at Luke chapter 19, it says, occupy therein. But somehow, that servant misses the boat and just occupies therein, but never looking at the word as, of God as he has now moved on. And his house to be broken, it's not where you live on streets such and such in a building made of wood and whatever. It's the house in which he is over because he's a servant. And how does the house get broken? I don't know. Yes, we do know. As he's, this servant is in, put in charge of an assembly. He's ministering of the things he's heard. But for some reason or other, whether it is personality or whether it is things he didn't feel that it was not what he needed to hear, he stayed with a message through that apostle. So as time moves on, and God wanted him to watch and to increase, not to stay where you are at. Now as he's looking forward, as time is moving forward, time will have progressed long enough. God will have revealed a lot more things, more nuggets, and he's not up to date. Yet, that house is not broken yet. But when that third watch is finished, when the seal, is seventh seal is broken, or during the time of the miraculous, to the point where the seal is going to be broken, it will expose that servant was not up to date. And it will break it up, his, his assembly. And the people say, why didn't you follow on? Why didn't you tell us? Why weren't you watching? And we Gentiles like to blame somebody. It's your fault. Not mine, it's your fault. Yes, that servant is responsible for that assembly. So therefore, his house is broken. It's broken when God now starts to vindicate his truth that he has in the hour at at that end of that watch, and this servant has not been watching. Is that clear enough? Now that's one of them. But we're going to deal with other servants that what's actually transpiring now, and we're wondering what's going on and who's doing what, we're not here to put the finger on any one. But just to bring to a highlight, if Jesus is speaking about this last watch and the end result is is what has been transpiring in this watch there's somebody or some places has to fulfill what he's talking about in the next verses because he says concerning that good man of the house he called him a good man he didn't call him an evil servant he was good to the point where he came but he didn't go all the way be therefore 
Ready also. Now he's stressing the point. For the Son of Man cometh in an hour. You think not. That servant thought he's coming and all I needed was the message of the apostle and, the, and occupy the thing that was delivered. That's what cost him when time went on far enough that the Lord does come. He was not ready for that last watch. Now, we're up to verse 42. And the Lord said, Then who is that faithful and wise steward whom the Lord makes ruler over his household Now, the good man, he was over a house, but here it's talking about God's household. Who is the wise steward that the Lord made ruler over his, over his household to give them milk in due season? No, meat in your season. Not meat of seasons past. It's good to speak about it. There's things you need to, we need to bring up and look in those things because there's young people that has not been acquainted with the message. But for those that God has been, the bride that he's been bringing along all along, then there has to be meat in due season. The season didn't end in 2004. Blessed is that servant whom the Lord, when he cometh, now we're talking about the end of the watch here. When he actually comes here, because watch the words what he's going to say, going to show when he actually does come. Blessed is that servant whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth, I say that he will make him ruler all that he has. That's the reward of the wise stu uh, steward. But if... 45, that evil servant says, my Lord delays his coming and begins to beat the men servants and maiden and to eat and to, be drunk, to drink and to be drunken. So there's going to be an evil servant. That evil servant was there when the other servants were being fed in verse 36 and 37. He's receiving an intellectual understanding of what God's bringing down during that period of time. But inside, he's not a true seed. And so he has to be instilled enough of the revelation to deceive. And when it comes, it's time for him to step on the scene, like the fivefold ministry, to step on the scene. Now he gets anointed by a false anointing, and God calls him an evil servant. Well, I get nervous when you talk like that. We've got to talk about it sometimes. Not everybody's going in the rapture. There are still tears. Of a truth, I say unto you that he will make... Oh, sorry, in verse 45. And I say, and if that servant says in his heart, my Lord, the days is coming, I shall begin to be in his men servants and maiden and eat to be drunk and to be drunken. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him. Why is he not looking for him? As that third watch or that second watch gets into a place wherever he is, is in time, he's not going forward. He has his own ideas, and he's not knowing the time, the meat, to show when the Lord is going to actually be coming. And so the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him. Well, why is he not looking for him? Because he don't believe the message of the true steward, the wise servant. That exists now. And when he's not aware, we'll cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. So it shows the end result of that evil servant. Why does he call him evil? Because he smoked, drank, and did the things. He was evil because he hid truth or caused people not to see the truth and gone into error. Now here's 
what's been laying for a while, and I'm going to look on this aspect of what really I want to point to this morning. And that servant which knew the Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. He didn't call him an evil servant. Neither did he call him a good servant. But he is a servant nonetheless. And he's going to be beaten with many stripes. That falls in line with that man that had his house broken. There's two categories of assemblies or ministries that will be ministering when the time comes to a close have refused to accept what God's doing in 2017. And so therefore it says here, and he knew the Lord's will. He knew he should have been watching. But for whatever reason, maybe he didn't like that, that servant that God was using. Just like in the days of Brother Jackson. He's that blackbird. We don't want to listen to him. And so he's, he's not preaching false revelation into error like the evil servant is, but neither is he moving forward. He knew that he should be watching. But because of one reason or other that he's not looking where he should have been watching, then he's going to be beaten with many stripes. Now how do you beat a servant with many stripes when we're talking about the spiritual aspect? God's not coming down with a whip. But what's going to happen? When the watch is finished and the Lord comes, here's that servant. He knew he should have been watching. But for whatever reason that caused him not to watch, in the last watch, now he's standing there. He's a servant of an assembly. And now God confirms the wise servant. And it causes him to receive stripes. Stripe would be like when God vindicates the true truth, the actual meat. And I've been saying that is not the true meat. That's like having a whip on your back. Your pride gets a real whipping. Because God's not going to confirm everything and everybody and everywhere. So that servant gets whipped with many stripes because he knew what the Lord wanted. That's in the world today. Somewhere that has to exist. Brother Fred, can you tell me who that is? No. We just have to know those conditions are prevalent and will happen and is in now in the, in, on the earth. Well, don't put it that way. Just preach me a nice message. Everybody going to heaven. My goodness. This morning coming out from home, there's a Catholic church. There's elderly people. They're dedicated. They want to get closer to God. They love the Lord. Yes, they do. But that's through the carnal mind. Jesus says, if you love me, you'll keep my words and my sayings. And that's not just in 33 AD. It's even what's on ground today. So they don't love the truth. That's why they're stuck where they're at. Now, if I picked a, a newer, gen, modern generation of, of denominations, some people would cry. But there's one thing I have to admit. They are dedicated. Storm or no storm, minus 40 below or not, they're going to that Catholic church. They want to get closer to the Lord. Maybe because they're getting old, they want to get closer to God for whatever reason. But Satan has deceived them. Now, Brother Fred, no, my mother's there, and I don't know if she'll be saved. I, I, I believe the Lord should have something for her. 
God can save whom he wants. He give mercy to the souls under the altar. We leave that in his hands. But as far as the denomination is concerned, no, that thing is going to the tribulation and then ending up at the, white, at the white throne judgment just to be thrown into the lake of fire. All right. Now we're getting to the next servant. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. I don't mean to put it this way. Ignorance is blessed. Because he's not going to get strapped as hard as the one that knew the, the Lord's will. So he didn't know the Lord's will. He might be a new up-and-comer. Coming up, because if he'd been following the message all along, he would know what the Lord's will is. But somewhere he committed things that was worthy of strife unknowingly. shall be beaten with few stripes, for unto whom much is given of him shall be much required, and to whom men have committed much of him will ask the more. And here's the whole thing. This Joel Oldstein uh, lovey, lovey stuff, and uh, love is going to cover everything. Jesus says, I have come to send fire on the earth. Uh-oh. And what will I, if it be already kindled, if it had already started in his day? Because there would be the two spirits. I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how am I straightened till it be accomplished? Suppose ye that I've come to give peace on earth. Not then, not now, but in the millennium it will be. We have peace inside because we're born again. But as far as the world is a natural concern, there is no peace out there. Look at what's taking place now. I mean, how ridiculous can our politics get? Now, the world's talking about Trump, but that O'Leary that's coming on scene, he's a makeover of the same Trump. <laughs> They're cut from the same cloth, so to speak. What was going to happen to Canada when that comes? But anyway, not, don't get into politics. This is not about politics anyway. Suppose that I've come to give peace on earth, I tell you, nay, but rather division. The word divides. It's the word that makes the difference. I looked at, um, well, let's go to, to bring this home in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, if you want to turn there. For yourself know perfectly. He's talking about that day of the Lord cometh as a thief in the night. That shouldn't be a surprise to us. Neither to them down through the ages. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come upon them as travail upon a woman with child. They shall not escape Yea, all are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but watch and be sober. How do you fall asleep? If I just stay in the area, of what's been delivered, although as great as the thing that was delivered to us. However, God has moved. And you can look back in the days of Azusa Street, you look back 
At, in the Brother Branham's day, the same thing. In time, if there's no fresh meat or revelation, as time would move on to a certain period of time, they fall asleep on their revelation. Oh, they'll speak the revelation, but it doesn't have the invigorating zeal that comes with fresh truth. So let, therefore, let us not sleep. He gives a warning that we shouldn't sleep. As others do. Well, if he says there's others do, that there's some that has fulfilled going to sleep. But let us watch and be sober. Now, there was one scripture I have been reading over the, over the years, and I'm, I'm just going to bring this in for the last part. You want to turn to the book of James now? James chapter 3. It says here, brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Do you know what that means? For in many things we offend all. If any man offend, not in words, the same is a perfect man, and able to bride, able also to bride the whole body. Now I'm going to read you this morning how it would be spoken about in today's language. Brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers. That's morally speaking to the ministry. Ye know that we who teach will be judged more severely. Ooh, okay. Maybe you might not want to be a teacher. Verse 2 says, All of us makes a lot of mistakes. There you go, Brother Ray. <laughs> Give me enough. He'll make, let me make enough mistakes to get the job done. If someone doesn't make any mistakes when he speaks, he would, be per he would be perfect if he didn't make any mistakes. He would be able to control everything he does. There's only one man that spoke perfectly, controlled everything that he did, and that's none other but the Lord Jesus Christ because he didn't have a fallen, bo a, a corrupt body. And so therefore... Yes, even a servant of God can make mistakes. God allowed Brother Branham to say dual statements. Through the eyes of the world, he made some mistakes. But God allowed it to test a people. God allowed the apostle, Brother Jackson, to say some things also that there was a mistake on. But God, now he didn't make as many, very few. Because some of you listening on the internet, see, he's, he's going in the wrong direction this morning. But that should not detract us, because we should look, take whatever is said, take it to the word. And from the word, if there's things that are not right, I'll just use the example. Well, the rapture is supposed to happen in 2004, four and a half. Hey, we're still here. Okay? So a man can make a mistake. But he did not make a mistake when the Lord showed him the scriptural prophetic events. They're still as true as true can be. But somehow, if we have the Spirit of God, it should show us where God is speaking and where he's not.
So repeating again, all those servants in Luke chapter 12, when that third watch is finished, that's when he's going to judge the wise servant, the evil servant, those that has many stripes, and those that have few stripes. And the few stripes and the many stripes is the good man of the house. Had he watched, he would not have suffered his assembly to be broken. Not that the, every revelation was broken, but it was broken because he was not up to date. He should have been feeding on the carcass. He should have been feeding on meat for this hour. That's where the watching takes place. As a servant, that's part of the watching. As an individual, yes, we need to watch for how you and I walk with the Lord. But we also need to understand where the watching is at in this hour. And if we're in the place where we're understanding these things this morning, how much more nuggets or revelation are we nearing that miracle war where Israel will take all her land, where the bride is, has arrived in getting the revelation of all her revelatory land. We've come a long ways from the days since 2005. Are you saying you're, you're going to be tooting your horn this morning again? Well, These things since 2005 the Lord has brought. They're just nuggets. The first month, the sevenfold light, what is the half hour silence, the two days, what are the doors plural, the multitudes, the great whores judged in two parts, that great exceeding army of Ezekiel 37. The branch of the Lord is a small branch in Isaiah 4 and 2. And the Jews being killed two thirds in the middle after the middle of the week, the prayers of all the saints that ends that half hour silence, the four cherubims where they're taken from Genesis to the end as well, seven women to one man. The covenant of the Antichrist is what's written in the agreement is written in chapter thirteen, so it's going to be put in there. Also concerning the early church versus the latter, cha latter church of one full light to seven full light. The bride multitude, the watches of the night that we've been talking about even now. And the time and the seasons and centuries and ends, which we look at now as centuries and decades. And the last decade is toward that miracle war. If these things be false, and someone out there has a proper revelation, then please bring it out. I said, please bring it out, because I'd want to know. And not just go behind the doors and speak to others saying, that should not, that is not right. Because if, if it's of God, you're not just speaking against a servant, you're speaking against him. And that's pretty serious. Every man is fallible. Like I, that's why I, read, I wrote in James. All men make mistakes. But the hour is. And now come. I can see those different things we talked about this morning about Luke chapter 12. They're on ground, and they're in the process of being made. The bride's moving to her perfection. Some is are not moving on. Their house is going to be broken in. And broken in, there'll be a different categories in it that will have many stripes given to them and few stripes. They're not evil servants. 
but the evil servant, he will be cast into the lake of fire or go through the tribulation. These things are on ground now. Well, I thought the whole bride's coming together and that's going to work out. We may have that view. Yes, the bride's going to be coming together. She's going to be coming on the revelated word, not because, well, well, we agree and we all get together that way. It's going to be on the divine revelated word of God. And so, therefore, if there is those conditions, then if we have eyes to see and ears to hear, we can see that as going on with something, we wonder, well, what about this over here? What about over there? Not that we need to wonder, but we have a concern. I don't know, but you, I would love to, all of us come together and all have a, a jolly good old time with the Lord. Conventions are great. When God's in it. When God had a main speaker like Brother Branham. People didn't go around to the other ones. And when God moved on with Brother Jackson, because there was a source, and the others were in agreement with him. If they didn't, you would soon find them going in another direction. But today, I can look on the internet. There's a convention everywhere. It depends. You can go five, six times a year, different ones. What does this accomplish besides common fellowship? Now, don't get me wrong. It's good to come together. There is a certain buildup in it. But some words, if God's in it to, per, let's say, to project or push the bride forward, that some words, things have to be spoken in a certain manner. Why did we all go to the convention when Brother Jackson was around? Because there was a voice. And God used that voice to hold the plumb line down in that hour. The bride's not going to be put together with that, well, you got this and I got that and then we'll all shake it together and somehow it'll come out and we're all going to come together. Not going to happen. Stick around. There's people that's going to see and walk with the Lord. Well, well, Brother Fred, you shouldn't speak like that. Well, what do you want me to do? Preach something to put you to sleep? Do you know if you drink, if you drink some milk in the evening before you go to bed, it helps you sleep? But if you eat some meat in the evening, you're going to be awake. <laughs> right? So there it is. All right, I've said enough for this morning. But just to show that that last watch, there are conditions during that period of time, and it's found in Luke chapter 12, verse 47 on down. Somebody has to fulfill those parts. And just be thankful that you're walking with the Lord. It's not to give, oh, I know more than he does and, 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 and that and so forth. It's to stop us, the bride itself from being discouraged by seeing what she is seeing and what's unfolding. Didn't know this a year ago. Even four months ago. But I can see it now. And if we're getting that close, do we have to wait for an event like 911 to really get us down to brass tacks? I was going to say something else, but I know it's just be decremental. I'm going to say it anyway. Forsake not the assembling yourself, and there'll be less tonight than there ever was. Why? But let that miracle war take place. I bet you the, f not bet, don't use those words. 
I could see the place maybe full. Why would that make a difference? Now, not everyone, it sometimes can be restricted by finances or whatever case may be, or, or people visiting, or, or you're sick. And sick is not, well, I want to watch something tonight on TV, and I think I got a slight headache. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I have my excuse. Yeah, right. Now, I won't see it, and I ain't going to judge you, but there's one that sees. Right? We say we love the Lord, but how many is out on those other services? Better not go too far because then I'm, I'm pulling more wool this morning. Because I wish you wouldn't have gone there. <laughs> but if you don't know, then I'm responsible. Why do we assemble together? Just to hear a preacher? That can be part of it, but it's how we interact with one another. That's where you learn to be part of the bride, like how she's going to function in the millennium. I'm getting bad. I don't know where I'm getting this long sermon these days. <laughs> but I do have a concern, so praise the Lord. All right, let's just stand, have the musicians to come. Someone has a need. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for giving us eyes to see and ears to hear in the hour that we live in. I just pray, Lord, let us not fall asleep. As, Lord, we see your word that some will fall asleep or has fallen asleep. And I thank you now in that precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I fell in love with the Nazarene. I fell in love with him. I fell in love with the Nazarene. He took away my sins. He gave me beauty for ashes, glory for all my days. I fell.
Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for your watch care, your faithfulness to us. We just pray that you would dismiss your children with your blessing. Give us traveling mercies. Be with your children this day. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.